Hi, and welcome to my new channel on DIY effects and the making. In this video, we're going to have a close look at an LED and how to add it to an effect, so you can tell if it's on or off. As an example, we'll use the True Bypass effect loop pedal we built last time in this video. But first, we've got to ask ourselves, what are LEDs? LEDs are light emitting diodes, meaning they light up if electrical current flows through them. The brightness of the light is dependent on the current. The more electrons pass through the LED, that's what current is, the more photons are emitted. The diode part of the name means an LED will only let electricity flow through it in one direction. But even that, only if the voltage is higher than a certain minimum. Called the forward voltage. The LED itself will regulate the current flowing through it in such a way that the voltage drop is always its forward voltage. That's a problem. This LED, for instance, has a forward voltage of 2 volts. If we connect it to a power source with a voltage of less than 2 volts, nothing happens. The LED doesn't let any current through and doesn't light up. If the power source has exactly the forward voltage, the electrons pass through, the LED lights up, everything is fine and dandy. But what if the supply voltage is higher than the forward voltage? And guitar pedals run off 9 volts, which is more than 2. The LED tries to let so many electrons through that the voltage across it will drop down to its forward voltage. But the power supply can deliver ever more electrons. The current through the LED rises and rises and rises and rises and rises and rises. And rises. But this is a real life component. It can't handle an infinite amount of current. Let me demonstrate. It lights up for an instant and burns out. The LED can only handle a small amount of current, called its maximum current rating. And you should note it down when ordering components. We've got to make it harder for electrons to reach the LED. That's why we'll place a resistor in series with the LED. It's called the current limiting resistor and does exactly what the name implies. The higher the resistance, the harder it is for electrons to reach the LED lowering the current through the LED and the LED shines dimmer. If we want to get the maximum brightness out of our LED, we have to use the smallest resistor. We could do some math using this formula to work it out or look it up online. There are many websites. I like this one. The link is in the description below. In both cases, we'll plug in our voltage level of 9 volts and the 2 volts of our LED's forward voltage, our maximum current rating of 20 milliampere's, and get the result of 350 ohm. Although the next highest commonly available resistor is 390 ohms. We can always safely use larger resistor values. The LED will just dim a little bit down. I like the 1 kilo ohm resistor. It's just the right brightness. Indeed, because the current is lower, you'll save some energy. Besides, it's an extremely common resistor value. But now back to the practical side of things. Mounting the LED in the enclosure, adding wiring to the switch, and a power supply. The simplest way to mount an LED is to drill a hole and glue the LED in, or friction fit it. It's easy and obviously cheap, but I do prefer the look, durability, and ease of repair of dedicated mounts. I just think they're neat. We'll drill a hole in the faceplate and fasten our mount into it. As for the power supply, in this day and age we should ditch the 9 volt block. It's expensive and produces trash. Instead, we'll mount a DC jack. Make sure to buy a plastic DC jack. As for guitar pedals, the outer barrel contact carries the positive charge whilst the enclosures are grounded. I'll add wires to the DC jack outside the enclosure as I find it easier. The lower pin with the extra tab is connected to ground. The uppermost terminal is our 9 volt terminal. Drill a hole and stick it in. Now we're going to solder the DC jack, LED and resistor to the switch. 
First, stick the LED through the rubber plug of the LED mount. The LED has two different length leads. The longer one is the positive pin and we'll solder on our 1K current limiting resistor. On the other end of the resistor, we'll connect up the 9 volt wire from the DC jack. As we already have ground at the switch, we'll take advantage of that and place the switch at the ground side of the LED. If the lower terminals are connected, the loop is on and we want our signal LED also to be on. We'll solder a ground lead from the LED's shorter leg to the lower middle terminal and ground proper to the middle middle terminal. The upper terminal is still free and could be used for a second LED if that's the kind of thing you like. Now if the lower terminals are activated and the effect loop is on, the LED is connected to ground and lights up. If the upper terminals are activated and the effect loop is being bypassed, the ground connection of the LED is broken and it turns off. That's it, we're done. The reason I started this series with the true bypass effect circuit and the signal LED is because you could hardwire in any other effect circuit board. Just swap out the send and return jacks for the input and output of an effect circuit board. This schematic and layout diagram are going to be the framework for all effect pedals to come. The link is in the description below. Next time we're going to do just that with the most basic effect. A passive volume knob. A perfect excuse to learn about potentiometers. If you don't want to miss this and other pedals to come, click the subscribe button. If you like the video and you want the channel to grow, well, click like, share the video. And if you want me to build a specific other pedal, leave a comment below. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And you too. Yes, 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 yes. Shh. Go away.